Hi everyone, Ben here from Sydney Fruit Gardening and I just wanted to do another update video given it's probably been a while. Um, late autumn here in Sydney, temperatures are starting to get colder. We've had recorded temperatures down to 2.7 degrees at night. It's probably the worst I've seen so far. Um, so I just want to take you around the garden and show you how things are handling it, especially some of the, the tropicals and subtropicals and uh, just give you a bit of an update. So I'll swing around the camera and we'll take a look. All right, I'm just going to start here and you can see the uh, multi-grafted citrus has spat out a lot of lemons this year. Um, it tends to do this every year. It spits out a lot of lemons uh, to the detriment of growth. You know, the, the lemon side really doesn't get a lot of growth, but um, it really does pump out those um, those lemons and they're, they're just beautiful uh, looking lemons this year. Not many marks on them. Um, you know, so we're just using them in cooking and whatnot when we are when we need them. So, right outside the door here, so very easy to grab them and get, you know get back into the kitchen and use them. So, um, it is a multi-grafted citrus. We didn't get many limes this year. Um, no blood oranges either, but I did get a couple of mandarins which we had, and they were quite um, quite delicious. So. All right, now, um, as I did mention earlier, it has gotten a little bit colder at night and I have here my two, uh, two of my abiyus. These are seedlings, there's a, the E4 here and the Z4 uh, seedling. So I did have another Z4 and I lost that one, unfortunately. Um, and I just brought a Marcotta abiyu, which I'll show you in a moment. Um, so you can see here the leaves are this one was in a bit more of an exposed location, whereas this one has been in a little bit more of a protected location. So you can see the the one that's being protected is probably doing a little better. It's even, you know, even still growing, which is um, quite surprising. Um, this one is starting to show some yellowing, light yellowing on the leaves. It's not too bad compared to, say, this one here, a bit greener. Overall, they're still doing pretty, pretty good. Um, so I haven't moved them inside yet. Uh, I definitely will at some point, um, probably in June. We'll see how the temperatures go. We don't get, we don't really get frosts here, um, but we do get temperatures down. You know, uh, occasionally we might get down to minus one at night, minus two on a really bad winter, um, but we don't really get down there for very long. Um, the Bumbaroo mango here. It's had this attempt at new growth for a while, but it's just kind of sitting there now that the temperatures have cooled. I potted it up into a slightly bigger pot and it's doing doing pretty good. Um, go around here to this side and uh, your body carver down here. This is doing well. This is the one that's got the um, multi graft on it. It's uh, um, Momotaro, I believe, that's the graft here, and that's doing really well. But it's also just a standard um, Sabara uh, Jabodicaba as well. All right, the apples, I've done some work to the espaliers, so I've put up another rung of wire along the top there, and I've just uh, done some work pruning back where I can, um, but I I um, have left some of these long shoots because I'm going to harvest them for scion wood during um, during winter, so I can graft up some new trees, uh, which I which I sell locally here. So um, so yeah, there'll be more pruning and maintenance come July, um, July August probably. Um, uh, we don't, you know. Unlike a lot of other deciduous trees, like the stone fruit there, the, the apples here, you know, they don't always completely defoliate during our winters. Sometimes the leaves stay on. Um, sometimes I've I've toyed with some years I, I pull the leaves off, I manually defoliate them to force them into dormancy. Other years I've just left them on, and to be honest, I'm not sure there's a huge difference. This year we didn't have the best crop. Um, we also had a, a lot of apples that were lost to mice so mice some mice that live in those this big tree over there in the trunk they run along the fence and they they eat through these bags and get to the apples 
Um, so I did have these covered in nets, which helped. Um, but uh, yeah, it's a bit of an ongoing battle. There's about 32 apples grafted on here, apple varieties. So a lot of different um, flavors and textures of apple. So far I find that the Fuji, Jonah Gold, Sundowner are probably three of the best performing apples in our climate. Um, oh, as well as uh, Tropic Sweet and uh, Dorset Golden, the um, low chill apple varieties. Some of these trees even continued to flower. See this potted apple here, spat out a flower there. There's some little fruitlets forming. I have heard stories of people getting two apple crops in a season up here, or even up to three. I've not had that happen myself yet, uh, but I am told that with certain varieties like Tropic Sweet, that one's broken, uh, like Dorset Golden, some people get multiple crops in a year. That would be cool, but it hasn't happened yet for me. <laughs> uh, grafted white sapotes are doing good. There's one here, there's a couple around as well. There's another one over here. Another one here, this is the Max Golden as well, which is a, this is the only one I've got of that uh, variety. The rest are Kampong. Okay, this Relinia, this is my Spaliad Relinia. It's, it's uh, starting to feel the cold. You can see those leaves there. It will defoliate over winter, no doubt about it. Um, um, but it will grow back in spring. So I'm not worried about that one. Uh, Groomy Chama, Dwarf Groomy Chama down here. Look, it, it keeps getting this kind of black, black soot, black mold. I don't know what people would suggest to spray on this one. Copper spray maybe, let me know. Similarly with this Sapodilla seedling. Uh, little jackfruit, Spalia jackfruit is doing okay. The uh, white sapote, the camp up here, this one has done very well. That's so uh, come along a come a long way. Um, lots of growth. It's starting to feel the cold. You can see the, this kind of ruffling of leaves a little bit on the campong, but um, look, nothing really to worry about. To be honest, this was just new growth, probably at the wrong time. It has tried to flower again. Got some flower buds over here, but they're sort of sitting. Have been sitting for a number of weeks, not opening. So we'll see what happens with those. All right, I'll take you down to the coffee tree. Coffee tree's got a lot of a lot of fruit on it, um, but they're they're also sitting now, so it's not um, not really ripening up. So we'll, we'll just wait that out. This is the first crop for that tree. Quimook's doing well. Again, it's trying to push out new growth as well. So it's still um, doing okay in this location ever since I removed those raspberries. And uh, this Garcinia again, it's a Garcinia intermedia, lemon drop mangosteen. It tried to probably push out growth at the wrong time and it's just sitting there at this stage. Uh, seed of a cherry again some of those early signs of cold damage creeping in but otherwise it's looking pretty good slow slow grower this one so we just be patient uh, I'll take you into the bananas so with my first red daca banana uh, bunch is growing nicely they're the male flowers, I think, and yeah, there's a the flower bell. Do you guys remove it? I'm hearing different things as to whether you should or shouldn't remove the, the flower head or the flower bell. Um, but yeah, a lot of a lot of bananas growing there. It'll be exciting to taste these. I'm debating whether I bag them up or not. Mm. Uh, wax jamba is quite hidden back here, but it's doing okay-ish anyway. Yeah, so the wax jamba is doing all right. Um, 
I think once this banana comes down, this big guy, once this one comes down, it will open up the light again for the wax jambu. But in the meantime, it gets the benefit of um, some protection. All right, uh, acerola, cherry, I've got a few few of those, um, but they did seem to get attacked by bugs or pests or something, so they had a lot of marks on them. I wasn't game to eat them. I thought they'd have worms in, but um, yeah, we might have to bag them up or we'll cover that, net that tree next time. Uh, star apple's still outside. It's doing all right. You can see there is definitely some cold damage or nutrient deficiency coming in there. I'll, I'll need to... Um, might try and give it a little feed, light feed, just see how it goes. It's still trying to push out new growth. So, so far I'm pretty impressed with its cold tolerance. Um, the body carver, this is the large leaf, so that's the size of the trunk down there. It's, um, it's doing really well in this location. You can see there, um, Lucuma. Look, my seedling's doing okay, nothing really to report. Uh, it does get attacked by scale. So I'll have to do some cleaning of that scale. Um, this one has not really settled in that well. This is a large red, this is a red, red hybrid. So you can see it's got a lot of damage on the leaves. I don't know something being eating it there's a lot of damage um, i may bring this one inside soon just to just to try and let it have a better start in life um, in this climate anyway all right the uh, other relinia is doing really well so this is it's actually still pushing out some new growth and um the lower levels of this relinia, the closer it is to the ground, the more protected it is by this banana. It's um, it's doing pretty well. So I'm quite positive about this relinia up the top. You can see it starts to lose some leaves up there. But so far so good. Panama berry is actually still giving me um, some berries. Um, so I've actually managed to finally germinate some of these inside as well. So the Panama berry is doing well. We've had some very windy days where this thing was blowing, blowing like crazy, and you can see the um, the damage to the red daca leaves up there. So we had some very windy days, and the Panama berry has actually coped pretty well. So happy with that. Um, Jackfruit here is doing good too. You can see the leaves are starting to yellow a bit. So you can see it's starting to feel the cold a little bit, but uh, it's doing well. It's as tall as me now. Uh, this little guava, potted guava, as you can see, it's been eaten by uh, grasshoppers. I see them at night if, sometimes if I come out. <laughs> um, lychee. This is the Erdon Lee Lychee Marcot. Uh, it did get affected by the cold, this new growth in particular. Let's see, is that still in this one? Yeah, yes, probably needs a bit of a water too. Green Sapotis, no problem. Miracle Berry, yeah, this one's a struggle, to be honest. Um, I feel like it never really has what it wants, so. This might be just one of those plants that full stop doesn't doesn't work well in our climate, but we'll see. Canistel's filling the cold a little, but not too bad. This canistel's in ground, so first uh, winter in ground, so it's a bit of a make it or lose it situation. So we'll see how it goes this winter. Another guava there is doing okay. All potted. Soursop's still outside as well. So the sour stops it's doing pretty good. Pretty happy with that. You can see, yes, there is definitely some cold damage starting to happen, but overall not too bad given how cold we've had some of these nights. Obviously the full test will be the coming out the other side in spring. 
tend to find that the, the plants can look okay, but then they then they uh, can cark it when it all gets too much for them uh, towards the end of winter and early spring, but we'll see. Um, pleasantly surprised, looks like I've got my first blue java flower starting to uh, poke its head out. So that's great. Don't know why my um, bananas are choosing winter to flower, is that just normally what they do? It feels like the bananas would surely be better ripening over summer or spring, but anyway, that's the way it is. Now I've got two more, one on either side, ready to take its place. Uh, lots of black sapotes forming. The drop has stopped by the looks of it, so these ones are looking like they'll remain, so they're a decent, decent size already. Pretty happy with how big they are so far. Um, but these will overwinter and uh, we'll get them in August, September, somewhere there, October, yeah. So yeah, quite a lot this year. Um, so we'll see how we go. It's still a fairly small tree. It doesn't, um, at least the leaves aren't folded in as much, although some of them are. Oh, well, this is another one where I feel like it probably just doesn't have the right nutrients, but um, you can see this, this sort of pattern with some of the leaves. I need to look up what, what that deficiency means, but let me know if you have any idea. You can see that there. Uh, go in here. Yeah. The beetle leaf, beetle leaf plants doing really well back here in this protected location. I haven't really harvested this yet. I just want it to get established. And then I'll look at harvesting maybe. Sugarcane, the purple, and the um, the normal variety doing okay so far. And this is uh, turmeric. So yeah, the cha-cha's doing great. So it stopped growing now, but um, it did put on a lot of growth this season and uh, it's become a lot more of a, a bushier tree now. So I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, I've redone the espalier for this pair. I put up proper wires around the magnet situation. I did have magnets on there. Um, they just didn't uh, really work um, once the tree started to get bigger. So I've set this up and hopefully I'll get a... What I've done here is just put a little notch uh, above this bud. So hopefully that will cause, in spring, cause some growth to come out here. Hopefully. Avocado, the worts doing all right it's trying to I don't know it's just been putting out these buds I don't know if these are flower buds or what the situation is but it's doing okay I, I got rid of this tree that was starting to grow behind this wall here um, although it was providing some shade and some protection um, the trunk was just getting too big and it would have got to a stage where I could it remove it and it's in quite an awkward location there so that's gone all right keep moving let's go around the side all right so the seedlings down the side doing okay this one obviously got smashed the linear um jackfruit seedlings all doing pretty well some Jabodi Carter seedlings, some black sapotes. Now these um, two little ones which I got, this is a Eugenia anthropophaga. It's, uh, I think it reacted to tap water, to be honest, when I was spraying it. Uh, so when I had the sprinkler going, but when we get rain, it, it just grows nicely like that. And this one, the um, Eugenia, Piriformis lutescens or whatever. The leaves are folded in a bit, but I think it's still doing okay. 
More apples trying to flower. These are some of my grafted ones. These are all dwarfs, which I grow and um, and sell locally. It's also where I graft on other varieties where I run out of room on my main apple trees. So yeah, there's all kinds of weird um, heritage varieties here as well. Another canistel seedling doing okay. It looks like it's had some damage up the top there. And out the front, I've got the um, the Irwin mango. The Irwin mango is doing all right. I've got some new growth down here, which is great. Um, it, it is, you know, it's just got these bits hanging down, which I don't know if I'll remove or just leave or try and pull it up a bit higher. I'm not sure. Uh, little dwarf macadamia. This is a mini maca doing good. The uh, pomegranate is about to lose its leaves. I've still got a couple of pomegranates on here. One down there, a couple up here. So I just take these off as I need to use them. No rot this year, which is good. Uh, uh, lemongrass, orange, another mini. This is an extra dwarf espaliered apple with I think about five different varieties grafted on. Cherry's losing its leaves. I've pruned it back a little bit as well. Another cherry here. These are mostly low chill mini Lee, Royal Lee uh, cherries. Persimmon, we only got one persimmon this year. This is a Fuyu fruit. Um, so I don't know. I mean, it's still a new, new tree, I guess, but um, it's growing very strangely as well. It's got this kind of side shoot over here, and then it's got the upwards, upright here. So I don't know about that one. It's Hopefully it'll um, sort of find its feet and we'll get a better crop next time. There's a finger lime in there, which I planted. It's doing okay. And uh, lastly, um, the dwarf macadamia here. So that's the front yard and I'll take you inside just to show you a couple of the plants I've taken inside. Alright, so this is a um, Marcotted Abbey U. It's got a bit of new growth but it does get, it's lost a lot of leaves. Yes, this kind of blackness forming but um, I don't know if it's the heat coming out from this window or if it's the cold at night. This is our back room, it does get a bit cold. Um, this is an Alfonso mango, just a small, it's got a graft there, but it is starting to push out some new growth up there, which is great. Uh, the Luke's, the Luke's seedling was trying to push out new growth outside, but that just got burnt by the cold, so I brought it inside. And this is a grafted Luke's. We'll see. There's some new growth that came out there. I have struggled with this grafted Luke's quite a bit. So I'm hoping that just by babying it a bit, bringing it inside, we might get lucky. All right, I'm trying to grow some seedlings down here. And uh, I'll take these out. These are the Panama berry seedlings. Finally made to germinate some Panama berries. They're really small still. Lots on this one. But yeah, they're tiny, tiny, tiny seedlings. These ones haven't germinated yet. I've got some old, I found some old sour sop seeds. I don't think they will germinate, but we might get lucky. All right, that's all I wanted to show you guys. Hope you enjoyed the video and see you next time.